How's everybody doing tonight? We've got a great EWAB show coming up in just a little bit. We've got a great guest, Juan Carlos Bagnell. He is also known as some audio guy, so that'll be interesting. He's a he's a casting director and a uh, and a voiceover director and a real audio geek. He has a, a, a tech blog, and we'll be talking with him about that. Uh, George has some special toys that he ended up in his, on his doorstep mm-hmm. this morning. Yes. And we're going to talk about uh, some very, very nice microphones. And my tip of the week, what's the best recording software? And yes, also news out. updates. News updates. That's right. So that's East West Audio Body Shop coming up. So don't go away. We'll be right back. He's the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and the home studio master, hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen. And the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica and his penthouse studio in Buffalo, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. And good evening. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together, we are East East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Well, I got a bit of a cold this week. Aww. It's it's finally starting to ease, but there's nothing worse than a cold during the weekend. Yeah. You know, but fortunately it was nice and comfortable on the back porch so I could nap. I managed Don't, to get back from the East Coast without a cold. Right. And you got a nap <laughs> in as well. So That's right. Uh, I just flew in this morning. I, I was on a pl- tired. I was awake this morning at 2 a.m. West Coast time getting uh, to the airport and getting on the plane. Thanks, Dad, for giving me a ride to the airport at the crack of dawn, before the dawn this morning. Thank you. And yep. uh, here I am. I was back east to meet with a, a, a new employer, a new team member, a new organization that you've probably heard of. I'm going to be telling you more next week. Next but week. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Got to meet a lot of new people, see some clients, got a lot of work done, and see New York. And uh, it, w- it was a good time. And then I got to see a lot of family in Pennsylvania. Can't beat that. And a wedding. Slid a, slid a wedding in there somewhere, too. Wow. It's good times. Wow. Sounds like it was a busy week. It was. Yeah. Me, I me, I was I went to garage sales this weekend. <laughs> and I picked and I picked up this fabulous case. Nice. That looks cool. To, dis- to display my microphones in. My dad would appreciate that very much because he's got several cases like that of tchotchkes and collectibles and antiques. Yeah, well, there the, was somebody was having a moving sale, and I'm like, "Ooh, ooh, a glass case!" In fact, this PP puppy came from there, which you guys will have to see later because you can't I've see me. Seen but the you've puppy, seen the PP yes. puppy, okay? <laughs> Anywho, anyway. so I came home from visiting Ella at the park today. I got to see Ella for the first time. I got, I even got video of her running from about a hundred feet away. Daddy, you know, you can't you can't beat it. Best thing ever for a dad, you know. <laughs> And came home and uh, walked up to my step, and there was a couple of boxes that said Sennheiser on them, which can only mean wow. one thing, is that some microphones showed up. And one of my wonderful clients wanted to demo some mics, so I contacted our buddy Chris Courier over there at Sennheiser Neumann, and he shipped a couple of mics over. So I thought I'd have a little bit of show and tell. What a guy. What do you yeah, say? Yeah, so let's, let's show and let's tell. All right. So uh, let's see here. What do we got? What do we got here? We got uh, a TLM 193, which is probably one that you guys may be the least familiar with. I also have a U87 AI NI, and I believe the NI stands for nickel finish, which is the sil- silverish color that people are used to seeing probably. And I have a TLM 103 MT which is like the dark color. And so I'll, ba- I'll break these out here. I'll just show you what they look like in comparison so you can see their physical size and we can compare the features. And weighing in also, we've also got our guest co- who's going to be on later for the, for the more formal part of the interview, but we're also going to have our buddy Juan Carlos Bagnell. Juan, you're going to be hanging out and commenting on the mics. Absolutely. I'm always down to chat some mics. Thanks, man. Well, we're going to geek out together here. We're going to have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I'm going to a better camera shot where Jan can, where Juan can actually be seen. Sorry about Grab that. Him, pull, pull, you know, pull, uh, pull him in here a little I bit promise, more. I they're, promise. They're I promise. I'm not really missing much. I mean, I am <laughs> some audio go. guy, not some video guy. So. <laughs> exactly. Got you, man. Well, thanks for thanks for coming early so you could hang out and talk mics with us. But uh, oh, of course, appreciate it. So let me go to this big shot here so we can seal better. Okay, so I'll pull out the mics that are maybe more familiar to some of us. The the 800 pound gorilla, arguably a voiceover, I would say, especially in New York, would be the U87, and this is a um, a venerable microphone uh, that has been in production in some form or another since when the late 60s. Is that about oh, yeah. right? Well, and and it, yeah, it was the late 60s because we also saw all those service bulletins in the 70s about people working the mics too close and getting tobacco all over them. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah really before the days where they banned cigarettes from the studio um nope. but this was when they went solid state uh, and started getting away from tubes actually we got a really interesting clip from west Dooley at aea the ribbon guy talking about his experience using neumann mics way back when we'll have that in an upcoming yeah. show but anyway this is the u87 this is what it looks like it's 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 the mic that it seems that almost every large diaphragm condenser microphone in existence Ooh, is modeled uh, on by this point <laughs> this is a, what's considered to be a large diaphragm condenser microphone um, but it's also got um, a unique feature of some of the more expensive sophisticated mics and that it is that is is dual diaphragm so it has two diaphragms one on the front and one on the rear can't really see it through the grill but Trust me, there's two diaphragms. There's one front and one back. And so what that lets you do is switch patterns. So there's a pattern switch on here. And right now it's in the popular cardioid pickup pattern. But it also has an omni pickup pattern, which means it picks up more or less a perfect frequency response all the way around the microphone in all directions. Which is good for like if you're in an interview situation or, or, or recording an orchestra or something like that. Yeah, if it, it's the most accurate typically the most accurate pickup uh, so that it's pretty much pretty flat in, in regards to its pickup characters. And have you guys, have you guys talked about proximity effect? Cause for those of those no. people having issues with working the mic too close, it's Omni that can save your butt. If your recordings are getting too muddy. Good point. Good point. Right. Yeah. When you're in Omni, that proximity effect is all, but re is all but removed, right? It's pretty much gone in Omni mode. Oh, well, and, and it's always that function of the more directional we make the mic the more severe the proximity effect Simply becomes, effective. which is why we like those uh, shotguns. And that low mm -hmm. bar polar pattern is very, very narrow. It's, right. You know, there's a lot of rejection, but that also means the closer you get, the more it's going to start to overemphasize mid and low frequency sound. Exactly. So you get a lot of flavor. When you have a switchable pattern like this, it gives you a lot of flavors. It also has a um, figure of eight pattern, which is really, and really an interesting pattern that's native to ribbon microphones, which again, we'll get to talk about a lot more when we, when we have our interview with Wes Dooley. But the ribbon, uh, I'm sorry, the, the figure eight pattern gives you uh, pretty much exactly the same pickup on the front and the rear of the microphone, but then rejects the pickup on either side pretty effectively. And that pickup pattern is very directional. Um, it really does yeah. pick up very much what's front and back and not much on the side. Great for uh, singing or interviewing on either side of the mic, but also it could be helpful if you've got a piece of glass or something right off to the side of the microphone and you want to reject it, as long as you have something on the back to absorb that uh, reflection, a good absorbing panel, then that could work well too. So don't just default to the cardioid and expect that's the setting you use. It, it may not be the case in your studio, so don't be afraid to try different things. So that's a U87. I don't have the shock mount for it yet. I'm waiting for it, but it has that typical large spider looking shock mount that you and, see. And, and that shock mount is generally more expensive than most other microphones. <laughs> the shock You're mount, right it rivals the cost of <laughs> most of the other cheap, cheaper or less expensive uh, Chinese microphones that are out there. So that's that guy. <coughs> then, then I'll, you know what, I'll pull out both mics just to compare the size. But here's one that I'm less familiar with, and this is the. I'm really interested in trying this one out tomorrow. This is the TLM-193. Yeah. And it looks a lot like the U87 from just overall... A little tinier. It's smaller, yeah. It's like a shrunken version. And it's a more... Is this a more modern design, Juan? This was like one that came out later on in the series and they were trying to use it as a possible replacement? Uh, no, well, it, they... 
Because a lot of the Neumann mics, because you, you mentioned that this is uh, the U87 is dual capsules, capsules front and back. Right. The capsules from the U87 are very similar to the capsules that they use in the other mic that you've got, the TLM-103. Right. And so the TLM-193 was supposed to be the little brother to the successor to the U87, which is the U89, mm-hmm. which was going to move from a three-polar pattern uh, to a five-polar pattern. It was sort of Neumann's response to the AKG C414 uh, and them okay. trying to take that multi-pattern reference mic up another level, up another stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and it never really quite caught on like the U87 did. But the TLM-183 is, is sort of the, the one capsule version of the, the U89. And so that design sort of references the U89 design which is a lot like the U87. Gotcha. Um, I always thought it was really interesting that the TLM-193 didn't resemble the TLM-103, because uh, the 103 is probably one of their most popular mics. Yeah, which we also have as well, because uh, we're looking for three mics that I thought would have contrasting, somewhat contrasting sounds that we could all try in the same booth with the same voice actor. So we also got a 103 as well, which in here in LA I know are very popular in the booths that, are, that yeah. I've, I've worked in or been around um it's it used to be the baby neumann it used to be the least expensive one until they came out with a 102 dan's right. got one hanging there too and uh <laughs> i think this is does this share a capsule from the 80 u87 ai i think it I, i'm pretty sure, it does. I'm pretty sure yes. the capsule in the 103 is 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 if, if it's not the same capsule it's very similarly tuned right to the capsules that you'll find in the u87 ai right and it's definitely a physically large capsule in there uh, compared to the to the one 93 if you can just about make yeah there you go you can probably see it in the grill there versus what's um inside the 103 actually it's just the ring that's maybe different the capsules yeah. themselves the capsules look like about they might the be- same size yeah Interesting, yeah. Yeah, and of, and of course, this is the, the the 103 is a little smaller, has a smaller body, so right, it's just an optical illusion. Stubbier, you know? a stubbier body. <laughs> right. So that's just a fraction of the Neumann mics that they that they have. I have their Neumann microphone finder open at neumann.com slash mic finder, and uh, you can go through there and look and see the variety they have. There's quite a few. So, you know, what a lot of people will certainly ask is why. Why are there so many Neumann microphones? Why? why I was going to ask why. Right. What, what, what's the point in having all these different microphones? How are they different? And um, so I, the short answer is because they all sound different. Um, <laughs> that's the yeah. shortest of the yeah, shortest no, answers. That's, that's actually probably the best accurate answer you can give to that question. <laughs> yeah. Else we'd always just want to ask, why isn't there only ever just one microphone? Why bother making... You know, right. Shures and AKGs and Blues and... Yeah, we SEs talk about and- accuracy, right? We want the mic to be accurate. Well, that's not actually really true. An absolutely accurate microphone would be not so great at all to record on. There's a microphone, it's called a measuring microphone. I have one in my car, and it's just an omnidirectional mic. It's designed to be as close to ruler flat as possible. And yeah, it's serviceable. You put it in the right place in a good sounding room, and it sounds okay, but it's very lifeless. It's just, it's flat. It's super accurate. And these mics are not designed to be flat. They're designed to all have different characters. So Dan and I were talking before, it's, it's like paintbrushes, albeit very, very expensive paintbrushes. <laughs> very expensive. But they all have their own tonal characteristic. And um, that is why an established studio that's been around the block a couple of decades will have a, a pretty impressive mic closet because... The other thing is microphones maintain their value very well, and when they're cared for, they last for years and years and years. In fact, there's studios out there, I'm sure you've probably worked in some of them, uh, Juan, that probably have mics that are older than Dan in them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, maybe being, not being the oldest person older than yeah. Dan. But <laughs> no, I mean... Throw Dan a bone there. I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, there are tube microphones. The original, the, I think the first you know, Neumann microphones that were condenser were, were tube because they predated solid right. state. And some of those mics are extremely desirable to this day, like the U67, uh, U47. And um, those mics are, you know, valued in upwards of eight to $10,000 nowadays, and they're still working. So mics are a pretty good, um, a pretty good investment. They're, you know, they will, may not make, they may not gain in value for a very long time, but you don't, they don't lose a whole heck of a lot of value. So, but- but their value is in the quality of the audio you get out of them. But again, yeah. also the longevity is probably one of the most important factors. They're like buying a, buying a good car, 
You know, it's going to last a while. A Neumann mic is going to last a long right. time, a long time. So, uh, you know, I was thinking about plugging them all and testing them, but it, that would be a very tedious process to do right now. And with our show processing that we do on the show, it, there's quite a lot of layers of junk we do, but on the sound, but I will have audio samples that we record with them tomorrow when I demo them at, at uh, my client's house. So that'll uh, give me some material and I, then I can throw that up later or use it on the show or play it or put it up on our website so you guys can hear them. I'll be curious to hear to see what you think of the 193 because the sound of the 103 and the U87, we just understand that sound in voiceover. Like we just we just know it. We're just so comfortable with the U87 right. that when we stray from the way that the U87 sort of colors audio, uh, it, it can be a little jarring for some people. Mm. Well, that's what I hope. I want it to be different. Uh, you know, I want it to be contrasting to the others. And then what we're going to do is whatever the mic he likes the most, or we like the most, we're going to have ship the others back, and then they're going to send us a, a 173, I think it is. Yeah, the, 170, oh, wow. no, the 170R and a, I think a 67. So just some other flavors. Oh, to I was going to say, the other, the other one that I would want to throw in that test would be a 67. Yeah, TLM right, cool. 67. So we're going to have some 67 more 67 gets really analytical. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's you. You were talking about having like reference grade mm -hmm. microphones. The sixty seven is not, in my opinion, is not a very flattering microphone. So if you sound good on a sixty seven, it's because you sound good. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, point. the best the best horses get the best jockeys. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's my bit on the mics. We'll have right. more detail and more samples for you guys to check out later on. Excellent. All right. Well, we got a lot more coming up. We're going to talk a little bit more with uh, Juan in just a few minutes. And we've got my tip of the week coming up. And, of course, your questions. Uh, we want to answer your questions. We want to get back into that a little bit. You That's know, right. You guys are like, what's wrong with my studio? That's how we started this show. And somehow it turned into the Tonight Show. We're not quite sure how that happened. But, <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll be right back uh, looking at a tip of the week and lots more stuff right here on East West Audio Body Shop. So we'll be right back. Don't go away. are you planning on doing tonight? Hmm, I thought so. Now back to East West Audio Body Shop with Dan and George. Why, thank you. And it's Monday night. You know, um, what do you think? Monday night? You know, well, let's, let's take a show of hands here. Who likes Monday night? It's, uh, you know, it, yeah, okay. And it's, it's one of those things where we thought, you know, Sunday night was great. You know, we know people were home and stuff like that, but we also know you're home on Monday night. What are you going to do on a Monday night? Tuesday night, we know, is bowling night. Wednesday night is when everybody goes out and gets drunk. Uh, what? You know, I, in Buffalo? In Buffalo. All right. <laughs> All right. So it's a little local flavor there. Um, not that I, that's not what I do on Wednesday night. I okay. usually, like, stay at home and, and you know. and, and you know, I think Tuesday night and Wednesday night are, like, webinar nights. Is they it me or, like, every webinar on a Tuesday or Wednesday night? Right. So instead, you can join us every Monday night. Yeah. 
That's right. And we're here and we're here to solve your problems. That's why we've been here, you know, for the last 105 episodes trying to figure out what's wrong with your voiceover studios or more importantly what's right with them. And mm-hmm. I hope hopefully we've improved the quality of everybody's audio somewhere along the line. Uh but one of the things that is uh, you got that racked up to the the tip of the week thing yeah, I do. Bob there. Okay. One of the things that's most important is what you're recording on. You know, we used to have reel-to-reel tape, and then there was DAT, and then, you know, some people were recording the CDs, and some people were still using, you know, little micro cassette recorders to send auditions in, I'm sure. Uh, but now it's a lot easier. But one of the most important things is software. So let's go into the tip of the week and take a look at that. You got it. No doubt about it. I get this question more than any other question. Hey Dan, what's the best recording software? What's the best recording software? What's the best recording software? Dan, what's the best recording software? What's the best recording software? What is the best recording software? Well, that depends on three important considerations. Are you Mac or PC? What exactly are you doing? And, of course, what's your budget? You sure do have a lot of choices, too. I mean, look at this. Soundforge, Audacity, Reaper, Logic Studio, Audition, Twisted Wave. They're all great platforms. However, there's one I recommend you don't use. Yeah, this guy. Why do I have a problem with this guy? Because... Pro Tools is designed primarily for producing music, not voiceover. Yeah, it's great for major production, but not for what we do. So let's change the question. What's the best recording software for voiceover? So in other words, what's easy to use, but does everything you need it to do for simple dry voiceover and perhaps a little bit of enhancement? There's a lot to be said for Audacity. It's great because it's free. It teaches you the basics of visual editing, and it's got a lot of effects that will help you out. But it has one major drawback. You can't scrub. You can't play the audio manually by just taking the cursor and running along the audio. The ability to scrub, or as we used to say in radio, rock the reels, allows you to listen to the audio by moving it back and forth on the cursor. Like this. This is scrubbing. Being able to do this. It makes it a lot easier to find your cue points because you can hear them as well as see them. And this is Twisted Wave, which I think is a great program. And it's only $79. But alas, it's Mac only. If you're a PC, you have other choices. Soundforge is a great program. And Audacity will work on there. Simple, inexpensive. But there is a good multi-platform program that's my favorite. Adobe Audition. There's a reason that I like this software. This software is the best software there is for doing voiceover. It was designed for doing voiceover. Mostly for putting together video to voice. Which, by the way, kids, is what we do. I think that's an important thing to think about. As you can see, it's a very easy interface. A lot like Photoshop. As a matter of fact, Audition is Photoshop for audio. And here's why I say that. This is a spectrogram. It's showing different frequencies in their relative volume. And this is Auto Heal. Once you learn how to use this, you'll be able to remove sounds like mouth clicks and nasal thumps and all sorts of stuff just by trying to find these little anomalies like this one here, highlighting it, hitting auto heal, and it's gone. It's magic. Yeah, it's a little more expensive, but it's worth it and you can use it on Mac and PC. I suggest you try their 30-day trial. As a matter of fact, I say if you really want to find the best software for you, Use some of the 30-day free trials that all these companies have, like Sony with SoundForge, and of course, Audacity is free, and Audition, and Twisted Wave. They all give you 
30-day free trials to find out if it works for you. And that's my tip of the week. Yeah, I, I guess it all has to do with your workflow, and uh, this, it, it's what works best for you. I think is the most important way to put it. Uh, you know, I know what I use. I, you know, I use Audition and Twisted Wave because there are certain features I like in both. I know Twisted Wave is great for doing long format stuff because it's such a simple program. And it, of course, I have so much memory in my in my my Mac Mini now. It's not really a problem. But Twisted Wave is always very very reliable for doing long format narrations. Yeah. Plus, it, it also is great at cutting up files, which I mm-hmm. really really like. It's uh, that's a huge time saver once you're once you're able to figure out how to do that. But Aud- Audition has so many great features to it, and as I said, it really is designed. For, for producing a, a dry voiceover, and not even dry voiceover. It's really designed for creating voice tracks for video. So it's designed essentially to be like Photoshop for voice. Mm-hmm. And, once, and once you master all those skills, it's, it's really, really nice. Yeah, so, it's pretty awesome. I always liken Twist-A-Wave as like the SoundForge for Mac, until at least SoundForge did come out for Mac. That's yeah. a whole other story. But um, yeah, Twist-A-Wave, I'm a big fan of because I used to use SoundForge a lot. I also used to use a program called WaveLab, by Steinberg, yep. and I loved yep. that. That was I used to do live concert recording on a on a Pentium ninety IBM ThinkPad, and it was it was rock solid. I could do live recordings with that thing. I had a Digigram card that slid into the PCM slot. It was like a five hundred dollars sound card. Anyway, yep. so I digress. Uh, my, my, <laughs> one of my favorites was Magic's Music Producer, but that was like nineteen ninety nine oh. or so. Right on. When those first came out, it cracks me. Like, people are like, yeah, "What what computer do I need to record audio?" I'm like, "I've been recording audio to a computer since the since the '90s." Yeah, I know people that have been dabbling since the '80s. I'm like, "You don't need, you don't need a monster machine to record a track of you know a voiceover track, you know? Really, just keep and, it and, clean." Yeah, and to clarify one thing, because I I you know we talked about Mac versus PC last week, and, th- and yeah. that's the thing about Pro Tools. I, I really don't have anything against Pro Tools. It's a fantastic program, yeah. but you it's not something you start with. It's not a beginner's program. Um, you know, all these guys say, oh, it's not hard to learn. Well, yeah, there's arm this, do this, do that. Why, when you do this, make sure this is all lined up. You jump and through like five fiery, fiery hoops before right. you even hit record. You right, know? and then Twisted Wave, it's hit record. Yeah. record it's yeah. there's really not a whole lot to it and exactly. it records just as well and it's all still ones and zeros and it all still sounds the same in, in the long run so uh and remember those tracks can always go on to pro tool somewhere else so don't that's let right. anyone tell you that ain't the case that's right anyway Juan carlos bagnell some audio guy is what he goes by uh, will be joining us in just a minute and uh, we got lots of great questions for him talking about uh, voice casting and voice voiceover direction and of course we'll take your questions in the chat room so stay tuned we'll be right back here on east west audio body shop with some audio guy VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, Georgia set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. This is East West Audio Body Shop, where Dan and George don't speak geek. Well, occasionally. We got to speak geek once in a while. We once got Juan here. That's right. 
He doesn't. He doesn't appear to be much of a geek. Juan Carlos Bagnell, some audio guy. Welcome to the show. Welcome to I'm, again to East West. He's got a Superman show. logo on his shirt. Said, You're I telling mean, me he's not a geek? Here, I could be for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like Prince of the Geeks or something. <laughs> No, but thank you for having me, guys. I've, I've, I've been a big fan, so I'm, I'm really stoked to be on and uh, chatting with you guys. Great. Well, now, you, you have a slightly different oh, occupation in the voiceover business. Now, I, I, first I'll ask, have you, been a, have you been a voice actor yourself? I, I, I book about three or four jobs a year just from being in the right place at the right time, but I don't audition. It wasn't really my uh, pursuit to be yeah. a performer in moving out to California. Right. So it's one of those things. Hey, you, come here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> like, yeah. like it used to be in a radio station. Where's, I need that sales totally. guy. He, he's got the voice for this sort of you thing. You just yeah. chose not to exploit that whole right. angle. Right. Well, and, and also I kind of feel like it's it, to, to be cultivating good relationships with agents and with talent. I, I, I've always felt it was a little scummy if, you know, yeah. I was also cherry picking a bunch yeah. of jobs to audition on because the, the work yeah. that I get, it's typically a uh, very, very lean competition. You know, I might only be one of 30 people auditioning for a job for anything that comes my way. Right. Well, you're now you're as a, you're a casting director and you're a voiceover director. I mean, so you're, 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 you're working on that whole process there. What's really involved in what you do now? I, I think the majority of the folks that, that are, you know, our regular viewers to the show, we're doing mostly a lot of online stuff, not a lot of, people sitting in the same casting right. room staring at each other and psyching each <laughs> other out and that sort of thing. What's really different? What, what goes into, you know, your process of casting for, for a commercial? Well, first off, let me, let me just dispel that myth because okay, I good. think <laughs> people, people would be very happy to see that uh, voice actors in Southern California are some of the most open, gregarious, giving um, performers that you could ever hope to work with. I agree. And I agree. We, we also cultivate a sort of a camaraderie. So for those actors that try and play the on-camera mind games of sitting in the lobby, trying to psych people out, some of that slightly more rude behavior, scattering the copy that I've seen on on-camera uh, casting sessions, uh, it just doesn't fly. We don't like it. We don't want to work with people like that. And so uh, I think voiceover is one of those last bastions. And people are genu genuinely so happy to see each other outside of their closets <laughs> that <you> sort of <laughs> fosters some goodwill you know like it's 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 a it's a novel experience we we don't uh do face-to-face -face casting nearly as often as we do web casting these days so it's it's a treat it's not something that people get up in arms with or try and psych each other out well that's good i to primarily know. i primarily cast commercials in southern california um i i work through a company called the voice caster where I do most of my casting with. And then uh, as a freelance casting director and voice director, I do a lot of industrial work with uh, post-production facilities around town. Good. So what goes into, into casting? I mean, we're, we're always wondering, you know, you send that audition down the line. What is it that, that a, a casting director is looking for? I mean, I mean, obviously there's the script, there's whatever it is that the writer had in mind. And, and, and then you, you're, you're not the writer, you're, you're the casting director. How do you work with them, with an agency and these guys that write absolute poetry in Hollywood? I mean, the cop, the copywriters there are, it's, you know, compared well, to some local copy. I mean, what is, how right? do you do that? Um, well, you know, the, uh, the uh, an, an advertising exec will work with a production facility, and so uh, we might be involved on either side of that. The cast, uh, the uh, the ad agency might reach out to us directly, depending on what stage of the commercial process they're in, or the post production facility might reach out to us, depending on who's actually going to be finishing up that spot. But they give us a, a cutting of the script. Uh, they give us sort of what they are hoping is going to vibe with the video that they've shot or the audio that they need to master if it's a radio spot. Uh, and then usually after, after that, we'll try and glean from them about how many options they're going to want to listen to. And so uh, between a half day or a full day of casting, that means I'll be able to listen to between 15 and 30 voices. Um, I'm usually only good for about 30 to 35 actual people in front of me face to face over the course of a day before I'm really not that effective anymore. And then uh, we collect up all those auditions. And uh, if, if the client wants more feedback on that, we'll make recommendations or we'll talk about whether or not we need to refine what their description of the job was. And, uh, but usually uh, after a day of casting with 30 choices, as long as they were really honest with us 
about what it was they were looking for in the first place, we can usually nail what they're looking for. It's, it's, I take it. It's a lot of aha moments. It's like that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and especially with the producers that we work with, you know, if it's a first time producer, that, that, um, process isn't something that a lot of people are comfortable with. And so we'll start asking them questions and some people will actually get defensive. Like we might be questioning their commercial or they might be questioning what they're going for. Um, and, uh, it's with the producers that we've worked with that we've had long-term relationships with. We, you get to that shorthand very quickly. It's, it's very much like, you know, when an actor works with a director a lot, right. You know, yeah. you can I know, I know what he's a thinking. lot of that yeah. stage. Exactly. Right. And you can kind of anticipate what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Right. So it's, how long does it usually take you to cast something like in a day or, or I guess it's probably different all the time, but what's the average on something like you know, that? It, it really just depends on the size of the project. Like if we're doing a voice of campaign, you know, it's something that we really want to sit down and carefully consider who it is that we're putting on that project. Because again, we're one of the reasons people come to a casting facility is so that they can eliminate some of uh, the work filtering out voices from you know it's nothing against someone who might have sent a, su a submission it might be an amazing audition but it might be completely off spec once they start hearing voices you know once they actually start chewing through the auditions that they've got so that's really what we're in the business of facilitating those relationships and then helping narrow down that search to very selected and targeted actors for specific roles so a voice of campaign we might actually try and prolong that relationship just a little bit longer make sure everyone's on the same page make sure we're all communicating the way that we should that we're reaching out to the agents that we're getting good options for the talent that we're going to be auditioning and that the talent are working in a comfortable environment because we really want them to be doing their best if, right. if we're going to take the time to put them in our booth you know that's that's most of the battle right there is just the selection of who we're going to be listening to so when right. they come in i really want to make sure they've got the time to succeed, to really deliver the audition that we're hoping that they're going to give us. Right. But now, uh, yeah, typically, I, you know, like yeah, if, if it's a radio spot, I might be able to turn it around in 24 hours. Um, it, it really just depends on what stage of the process they're in and how quickly they need the turnaround. Right. Now, is most of the talents you work with through agents and, or, and, and mostly union or, or what? Mostly union. Yeah. yeah. I, it, it's, it's, it's very, it's not that common that I do, uh, uh, my, myself personally that I'll that I'll pick up a non-union casting job and part of that is just the infrastructure that you work in um so like if someone wants a full day's worth of casting from me um I'm probably good for about 20 of the 30 voices that I'll, I'll want to listen to just off the top of my head pulling up my smartphone I can usually fill about two-thirds of those spots um but getting to that last third getting those last 10 voices in to make sure I've got you know I I'm really giving them variety uh, I really need to be able to communicate with agents. I really need to be able to communicate with uh, people that can send me something fresh. I need to be on top of what new talent's out there. And so that relationship becomes vital. And uh, agents typically don't, agents in LA, anyway, typically don't like playing on non-union stuff. Right. Are you finding yourself casting people from the hinterlands outside of uh, the, the Los Angeles basin? Um. Myself personally, no. Uh, recently, VoiceCaster has been tackling a few more uh, regionally specific commercials where they want to hear options from talent in other, usually larger markets. Um, it's not uncommon that they'll see, we want to hear 15 voices out of LA, 15 voices out of New York, 15 voices out of Chicago. Um, that, that does pop up occasionally. But it's funny where LA just sort of has so much more mind share as a collection of good talent that we recently did foreign casting and we did the commercial campaigns for a major tech company in German, Japanese, uh, French, Canadian, French, uh, European, French, uh, European, Spanish and Mexican, Spanish, all from talent that was located in Los Angeles. Yeah. Interesting. Uh -huh. So, so once, once you're casting, then you, you, you change roles and many times you act as the actual director. And I think a lot of people probably haven't had the chance to really work with an actual voiceover director, although some of our coaches are very, very good directors and stuff. But uh, when, when you're, what's it like on the other side of the glass and what is it that you're trying to do as the director? Well, you know, the beautiful thing about commercials is, uh, well, the, the, the blessing and the curse is that the clients have a problem, and the problem often is they don't really know what they want. 
And so when we're really doing our job in casting, my job as a director is so easy because it, we're really trying to get, especially the current zeitgeist in advertising is all about honesty, testimonial, uh, drawing people into these really small, single serving emotional relationships. You know, we're really trying to get to that honest vibe as efficiently as possible. So when we nail the casting and the, the client really responds to a voice, there's very little that I have to do as a director outside of uh, guiding. You know, it, it's, it's subtle adjustments here. It's a push or pull there. It's maybe the, the, the talent isn't aware of the inflection of the tagline that they've been using consistently. So we want to help inform that. And you become a little bit more of a facilitator. Um, when, when the casting isn't clicking and when I've got to kind of manhandle someone, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of frustration on all ends because it, it ends up becoming that exercise of trying to get someone to do something that they're, that's not really a part of their vibe or not really a part of their, their, uh, you know, their whatever right. stuff. Right. And so it ends up becoming like my voice coming out of their face. And that's actually one of the reasons why I've booked a couple of jobs is the clients start hearing me line reading. Right. Hey, why account. don't you do it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I was on CNBC for three years <laughs> because of that. <laughs> so, you know, like I can't complain, but that's not really what I uh, try to do. That's not really what I want my job to be in this town. I don't like being a poacher. Yeah, really. Uh, okay. So back to the audition thing, because the direction thing is something I think once somebody's in the booth, they understand what a director's trying to do. And, you know, many times I'm sure there's lots of hands that run a retail. I know what I know what you want. Um, uh, <laughs> But what's the biggest mistake that talent make, in your opinion? I mean, first off with auditions, what's what's a big mistake people make? The, the, like in, in the casting process, the yeah, absolute yeah. biggest mistake anyone can make walking into a face-to-face -face casting, especially for commercials, is not having a clear idea of what it is they're trying to accomplish. It's, it's, it's vital. It's A number one. It sounds like the most basic piece of advice that anyone can give, but we have all of these little tricks, you know, like the talk to one person trick or, you know, mm. the imagine a scenario trick. We have all these little tricks, which in some, in some cases can actually distract people from actually trying to accomplish what they're there to do. And so you walk in, they walk into the booth and they're looking for the director to feed them, you know, what they're supposed to feel or think about a piece of copy when really the task of commercial casting is to get someone to provide us an informed perspective is to get them to provide us a personality. And, and again, when I have to kind of feed you that, it's not really your game. I, really? It's statistically unlikely that you're going to be the one that, that stands above the rest of the talent. And, and the people who crush commercials know what they do. They know what they sound like. They know what they can bring to a piece of copy or to a company or to a piece of advertising. They walk in, they're confident, they've made a choice. And even if their choice is wrong, even, I mean, not that this is really a common occurrence, but if their choice is completely wrong, I at least have a much clearer perspective of where they're coming from. So my redirect is even easier when someone just comes in with a, a clearly defined choice of what they're trying to accomplish. So um, what can someone do to increase their chances then? I mean, we've got lots of people trying to break into it. You're working with, obviously, with the elites in, in Hollywood uh, and people that are, as you say, who crush commercials and they're, they're constantly right. the guys that are doing it day after day after day and getting yeah. the big paychecks day after day after day. You know, this movie has not yet been rated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little inside what? joke there. But uh, what? it's what, what is it that's going to bring somebody from – you know, who's, who's obviously good because we know a lot of people that are extremely right. talented that are not in Hollywood and they, you know, how can they increase their chances of being able to get cast in these sorts of things? You know, um, it's, it's a, it's a slightly more difficult question for me to answer because I'm not used to working at the entry level of voiceover, but the, the, the behaviors that I see from the people who book consistently and, and make not only just make their living off of voiceover, but make a very good living off of voiceover are people that have a love of language and they consume language on such a regular basis that their sense of analyzing copy becomes intuitive. So we're talking about people with careers the better part of 10, 20 years that can cold read copy 
better than most people will sit there and mark it up and try and analyze it and come up with questions mm-hmm. and answers. So really, I, I would say, in one, you really want to be looking at your career as a business that's going to span decades, right. not at some point I'll be a professional and that'll be my career. You know, that'll be my job. You really want to be looking at this as some sort of holistic life choice. You need to love this line. You need to love selling soap. I don't care if you love the soap, but I but need you enjoy to sound. Yeah, yeah, you know that 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 this is this is becoming a part, and this is a, again this is a little bit more focused on commercials. Animation is a slightly different uh, beast, even though it's all still VO. Um, but but really incorporating that into sort of your life structure in a meaningful fashion. And building off of that, I don't know if any of, uh, if either of you guys have read Malcolm Gladwell. You know, if you start uh, reading a book like Outliers, and they talk about, you know, ten thousand hours of intense study. I really do see that relating to the people who are, you know, we would say are innate talents in voiceover. They're people right. that genuinely love consuming language, and they they embrace language, um, and they have this knack at making. Commercial copy, which I think even you know you were going to pay us a compliment that we get better written copy, but I think part of it is <laughs> that uh, people get really good at making copywriters sound better than they deserve, and uh, that's your job as a voice talent. You know that's uh, what we pay you for. That's so, right. Uh, you know that's that's what I would at least sort of the the behavior that I hope more people would embrace, uh, so that we can see the game raised all over the place. You know, so we can make all of these markets a little more competitive. Yeah. Well, moving away from that a little bit, you're also, all right, let's put it plain. You're a geek. Uh, you've got, you, <laughs> Thank you've you. Got, I'm embracing you, it. <laughs> yes. Embra- embrace your geekiness. Live your geekiness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you, you do a, a, a tech blog. Uh, I write for two tech blogs. I write for, I'm the senior editor of yourtechreport.com. And then I'm also the LA Tech Examiner on examiner.com. I just recently picked up that. that oh, nice. And then uh, I'm also the a co-producer and co-host on the Your Tech Report Sirius XM radio show, which broadcasts every Saturday. We have a one-hour weekly tech chat show where we talk about smartphones and tablets and toys and all kinds of fun stuff. So you're into, you're into all of it then, you're all all the toys and. Oh yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I you know, I I was born with a, an 8088 XT clone running DOS three under my fingertips, so. <laughs> You know, I field stripped my first PC when I was like five. TI ninety nine four A here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we had our computer uh, doing prank phone calls. Uh, yeah, in nineteen eighty three. So I love it. <laughs> great. See, but no, but I mean, it's it's just become and and especially right now is 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 a great time for people like me because geek has become chic you know there's everyone True. everyone has to embrace some level of tech savviness so when i was in grade school you know i would get laughed at for like my pocket organizer and you know, all of my little portable electronics and my graphing calculators and stuff but now people have to have glowing rectangles all around them and uh <laughs> you know I, i'm happy to say that i was ahead of the curve <laughs> what do you what do you think is the is the next biggest thing that's coming in tech Oh, uh, well, in, in terms of consumer tech, I think the smartphone has gotten about as good as it can get. We will constantly mm. see refinement and evolutionary improvement. But when it comes to holding a slab of rectangular glass, which blocks the rest of the world from you, right. um, this is about as good as the experience can get. If it's an iPhone, if it's an Android, if it's a Windows phone, I don't really think it matters anymore. They all do the basics pretty much about as well as any other. So I really think that we'll start to see a push into in interacting with data in a more world-friendly way, in a more safe way, especially for people that um, use technology in their cars, which you should absolutely uh, not be doing if yeah. it's distracting you from operating a motor vehicle. Um, I recently just covered Werner Herzog produced a documentary called From One Second to the Next, and it's mm. free to watch on YouTube. It's a half hour long. Cool. It's, it follows the lives of four families that have been affected by people texting while driving, and I would highly uh, recommend Oh, jeez. Okay. But I really think yeah. that what we'll start to see is stuff that brings this technology closer to our natural senses. Like Google Glass is a perfect example of moving the display closer just to our natural sense of sight in, mm-hmm. in a way that allows us to continue to interact with technology in a way that's far less distracting when we're out and socializing 
and should be safer in situations like we're walking around in a town that we've never been in before or right. or driving an automobile. I mean, it's the year 2013, and you still need to take your eyes off the road just to see how fast you're going in a car. You right. think we would have solved that problem by now, and it's kind of really yeah, really. Yeah, we got five questions from the chat room. We got, and we oh, don't, we don't want to keep, we don't want to keep you for more another more than another five minutes. So we're gonna do, you know, so can we get through Boom. five and five? Lightning round, five and Lightning. five. Let's do it. All okay. right. So All from right. J, I'll do do J S Gilbert first. What's the biggest mistake talent make in your opinion? I think we asked that oh, one already. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, that was easy. So Ding. <laughs> D box yeah. says, how this do one, you this one. <laughs> how do you challenge V O actors to get something special? out of them hmm. really it's it's not about getting something special out of them for commercial stuff i i really want to embrace what they bring naturally and that's yeah. why we spend so much time creating the lists that we do um when you're in the booth it's because i already have a sense of you that there's something right about you for this project so you don't need to wow me at that point you need to do what you do you need to give me the best possible version of yourself good answer yeah js JS asks, also, are most of the talent you work with through agents? I think we did actually ask that question. We actually, we actually yeah, covered this question, so we'll skip that one, too. I was, I was paying attention. Are, yeah. yeah. Um, Pat, Pat asked, uh, asked Juan how he defines conversational, conversational. for VO delivery. That, that, you know, golden, the, the silver bullet, conversational. <laughs> Um, well, it's going to change per commercial. So, like, if we're talking conversational and banking, then mm. there's probably a, a sense of vulnerability because mm. banks haven't really been good to us of late, and they're trying to help improve their image and being a part of their community. We're all in the struggle together. We're here to make your life and, better. We promise. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're a part of your community too, yeah. even though we maybe are responsible for wrecking some communities. Yeah. Um, I don't do a lot of banking spots. Uh, <laughs> not anymore uh, but, but conversational and <laughs> automobiles might be testimonial so mm. like especially I think Ford's campaigns have been genius lately like I used to drive a BMW but check out this new Ford Edge you know mm. like it, it's about trying to get us um, to reconsider something about that product or brand so conversational we like to throw it out there as a buzzword but the word itself really doesn't mean anything until we apply context and right. so this is where that kind of approach to your craft in how you love language and consume language starts to inform what is it that the producers are trying to accomplish and what is it that the character that they wrote for you is trying to accomplish. And those often aren't the same goal. Hmm. So you really kind of want to get into the mind of not only the copywriter, but of the character that they wrote. And that really helps it better inform what the approach might be to deliver something which sounds comfortable or casual or conversational or words that don't begin with the letter C. Right. All right. Uh, and Devox has a good one here. Have clients been changing what they're asking for over the last year or two? Are, are they, you, they, do we see a, a, an Tastes. evolution of styles? They change all the time, right? Oh yeah. Well, well, advertising is a constant state of flux. Um, but you know, out of out of the worst of the, the the housing and banking collapse, everyone was was rushing to embrace vulnerability, honesty, simplicity, natural deliveries. Um, right now, we're starting to see a little economic recovery. Some people are taking uh, some more risks. Uh, the web is starting to really influence how we uh, perceive entertainment media. And so we're starting to occasionally see spec pop up from YouTubers and um, descriptions of podcasts and popular web series. Um, I, I unfortunately also see a lot of stuff becoming more random, you know, sort of random wacky for random sake, like bad jokes from Family Guy kind of random. And so that's starting to kind of color and pepper some of the more youth oriented advertising that we see as well. All right. Well, I, it's amazing, you know, that we can get you on the show, a guy who's up there, you know, who really is, uh, you're, you're probably one of the freshest minds we've had on this show. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people with, with, with <laughs> big egos and not that a lot of people on the show, we ever have big egos, but oh, you really, on. you, you, you really are, you, you, <laughs> You express it the way it needs to be expressed. I think a lot of people are glad to see a down-to-earth person on the other end these days. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that quote on my, on my blog now. You know, Dan okay. Leonard, the freshest voice we've ever had on the show. <laughs> uh, I like it. Just totally made my night. No, Use I'm, it. I'm really stoked now. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for being with us tonight, Juan. It's been an absolute pleasure. We're going to have to have you on again. I, I like what you have to say. I, this I'd, is, love this... To do, I'd love to do it again, guys. This is, this is a blast. Excellent. All righty. 
Juan Carlos Bagnell, some audio guy, joining us tonight on East West Audio Body Shop. We got lots more coming up in just a couple of minutes, so stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dave Cravassier. You know, these days, to get anything accomplished in your voiceover business, you've got to spend some time online. We audition online. We share with others in online communities. Maybe you've even done some online training along the way. So here's the next big thing. It's called VoiceOver Virtual. It's this giant two-day online voiceover conference that's coming to you this September. And because it's online, you can attend and participate from anywhere on your computer. Wait a minute, I know what you're saying. An online voiceover conference? How does that work? Well, it works pretty well, actually. There will be training with dozens of the industry's top professionals. You'll find an innovative and interactive exhibit hall with some exclusive bargains. You can have private online meetings with agents and casting professionals and trainers, even get your demo evaluated. There will be plenty of chances to network with your colleagues, even make some new friends social media style. Pretty cool, right? Well, as your virtual MC, I'll be telling you more in the weeks to come about this amazing event produced by your friends at VoiceOver Extra with the help of some of the industry's top pros. Right now, why not just take a moment to check out this website and learn more? And if you want to get the lowest possible price on all this, check out the VO Virtual special offer at the registration button. See you in September online, okay? Welcome back to eWebs. We were expecting you, but we still didn't bake a cake. Here's Dan and George. Yes. yes. Well, you know, you know, time is like running out here. We almost forgot to talk about our sponsor. I know. Our He's favorite guy. Important. Our favorite guy, uh, Harlan Hogan at uh, voiceoveressentials.com. Got all the best stuff for voiceover. Because, face it, there's not a whole lot of stuff we need. But if you need it, he's got it. Uh, what's on their What's on their website this week? What's I cooking? Know they were having, what kind of specials do they have this week? Well, yeah, they they, they had a special end just last week on Monday, oh, so we bummer. we missed that one. But uh, right. he's always got. Oh, thanks, Adobe Update Flash Player. Blah, blah blah. You're yeah, perfect timing, right on cue. Thank you. Go away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love Adobe Flash, man. We nobody appreciates Adobe Flash anymore. Maybe because it's button his head in at the wrong time every time. I know. Plus, it's not going anywhere. But <laughs> exactly. anyway, voiceover so, essentials. Now there's <laughs> now there's one that, that the ABS the the uh, the adjustable boom stop. Oh yeah. Now there's something you wouldn't think about, except of course if your microphone's going to start falling over on you. I know. This is one of those products. I'll, I'll bring it up here on the screen, big screen here. Um, it's one of those products that. This is this is why we love Harlan. He sees a problem, he hears about a problem, and he gets in, in the case of this product, the ABS, he thought of it because somebody sent him one of the mics that had crashed to the floor. And he graciously had it replaced for the guy, which is really nice. And in the process he realized there's clearly a need for a product to help keep this from happening. You know, in a lot of cases we're using mic booms that are not really designed for holding he some of the heavier mics. The the pivots were the were not the clutch, but wherever the thing is that holds the boom up, the pivot, right. whatever. They're not made very well a lot of the time, and they 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 start sagging, or worse off, they just completely fail. So this strap will will brace your uh, heavier microphone and keep the boom from sagging. Stop boom sag with the <laughs> it's, ABS. It's, it's a jock strap for your boom stand. That's right. That's basically <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Well, enough of that. You can get it at Voiceover Essentials. Just it's just it's on sale for nineteen ninety five this week. That's right. You know, and so if you've got like a really heavy mic and you're you've had that problem and you're like you know throwing sandbags and stuff on the bottom of your thing, this is a great thing to try. So exactly. go on over to VoiceOverEssentials dot com and buy this stuff because it's good stuff and uh, it's not expensive, easy to get. Just go onto the website and tell them we sent you. That's the most important thing. Yes, that's right. Thank so, you, Harlan. Thank you, Harlan. You've been there since the very beginning. We really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. 
Um, I, I don't want I don't want this show to drag on too much longer, but I did want to mention just I, I'm going to start talking about some of the blogs that uh, I've been paying attention to lately. And there's obviously a few bloggers out there that we can't uh, can't miss. But before that, just a couple really really short announcements. We want to tell you who's coming up on our show, yeah, and what's up with us lately. Well, we want to thank. Well, we want to thank our sponsor, our donors. Actually, we've had a couple donors in the last yeah. week. I want to. We can actually. I actually have them marked in my email. Uh, Pat Sweeney, dude, you are always like, man. I can't tell you. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, You're, Pat. You can always count on you. Paul Pape. Right after he he was on the show, he gave us a donation. That was really nice. Yeah. Uh, Lee Penny, you the man. Like, what else can I say? These. Yeah. Uh, Eric Aragoni. Thank yep. you. You're per, you're just a perennial donor. I really appreciate it. And uh, one just seems to have popped up from JS. You're the man, JS. Thank you very much. You Thanks for Thank all those donations. Much. Yeah. Uh, what else? So the uh, we uh, our sponsors. We talked about Harlan. Thank you, Harlan, so much. Uh, right. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. And if you're if it's a, frustrated with Ustream when you're watching the show live and it's not streaming very well, then please have the patience to watch the show again on YouTube or just watch it on YouTube. Right. Uh, it's, been, it's been clean at this end this week. It has. I mean, I mean our, our art's been rock solid with what we're I, doing. I will say yeah. that YouTube just announced that they're offering uh, those with 100 subscribers or more uh, to stream live on U- YouTube. Ooh. So maybe we'll experiment with that we'll coming up that soon, out. you know? I have chances are it may be smoother for some people. So I just have to figure out the logistics on that. So stay tuned yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, got David yeah. Kay coming on August 19th. Poker There's classic. The, on the 24th. We're going to do a hangout on August 26th. So if yeah. you want to be part of our hangout on August 26th, email us, email and us get with a private a, invite. Yeah. Email us and, and send a question that you'd like to discuss some topic yeah. or question you'd like to discuss that will, That'll help move the show along. We want to we want to keep that show just as interesting as all the others. There are a lot of right. fun. We just want to keep it educational too. Right. Uh, Labor Day, we are gonna we're gonna rest that evening, that day, take the day off, September second, and then going yep. all the way up to September 9th, we got Tara Platt and that's Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal. Lowenthal. Yeah, they are actors, animators, and authors of the VO a VO behind the mic, and we hear they're fabulous. Yeah, so I'm uh, that should be an learning interesting show. It. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think that wraps it up pretty much. Yeah, what well, I was week. I was just going to mention a couple of the blogs that I was that that oh, right, have right. come up, and I I will keep it really short. Uh, well, take your time. But uh, um, a couple of the bloggers bloggers I follow all the time. We've got one of them, Nether Voice, over at nethervoice.com. That's Paul. Paul Strickwerda. Thank you for saying his name because I was about to say it wrong. Uh, <laughs> I blow his name all the time. <laughs> But he wrote a piece called "Good is Good Enough is Never Enough," and uh, it's. I just thought it was interesting. That it's kind of timely, and it starts out, "Dear voice casting agencies, you're being deceived." So there's a good teaser. Go, ch- yeah, go really. check out nethervoice.com. I, his articles are always very compelling, and I think this one's going to be interesting when that's going to kind of dovetail off of what uh, we were talking about with Juan tonight. So. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, another one that I popped up that I thought looked compelling that you guys might want to be might look at is um, Soundstreak just came out with their version officially came out with version 1.0. So and 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 Dave Cavassier Corvo has been really dialed into what's going on with Soundstreak. Uh, he's been really kind of just in lockstep with their their releases and stuff. So go over to Corvo's blog, take a look. Um, his blog is actually. I had it. Is it just Corvo.biz? No, it's uh, um, uh, 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 what is it called? Voice over uh, voice acting in Vegas, or no, I, actually, the, the the URL is Corvo.biz. Yeah, yeah. Corvo. Yeah, Corvo. C O U R V O. Dot biz. Check out the latest article. He's got uh, one talking about Sound Streak. He's also got some really good articles about. Google, because I know there's been a lot of uh, controversy around the fact that Google might be sharing a little bit more information about us than we would like them to. And I will say that um, (laughs) Google definitely knows everything about me. So I try to be a good boy. But (laughs) he's got his thoughts on that. And then his latest post is he calls it Tutorial Tooting. He actually did some tutorial voice work for Soundstreak. So... uh, Again, he's really tied into the Soundstreak folks over there. So 
get a get a get a uh, get, take a look over at Corvo.biz and see what he's up to lately. If you're not following him on the blogosphere, you're crazy. I mean, he is like a, almost a one-stop shop for compelling information, information, and he's also a bit of a geek too. So yeah. he he loves reviewing product just like Juan. So another great blog to follow. But each week I'll try to get in when we have more time to delve into more depth. I'll have a couple topics that I found around the wet net that I think you guys might want to know about. Great. We got we have to have Juan on again. He was great. Oh, absolutely. He was fantastic. I was so excited to get him on. I mean, it's great to have someone on. I'm, you know, everybody we have on, we're pretty much all we're fans of them on one level or another. But 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 Juan, I, I sit there on the sofa and watch him on YouTube, you know, like almost every night, you know. So it's a different level for me. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. JS is suggesting maybe we have him on a panel. That's probably not a half. Absolutely, idea. he would be fantastic. Get, on one get of him our... on the Audio Masters Roundtable. That's right. We'll see if we can get him for the next one. Yeah. Well, we got lots of other stuff coming up. Uh, like we said, we've got lots of great guests coming up. Uh, Voiceover Virtual coming up in September. We've got. Uh, Fafcon coming up. Lots of great events coming up. Oh, yeah. It's a busy uh, fall. We're getting into a really busy season now. Yeah. So uh, hopefully all of you will have lots of voice work to do from all of this. And and hopefully your studios will continue to operate properly. But if you're having a problem, write to us here at ewabshop at gmail.com. We're going to start getting it back more into people's uh, problems and weird stuff that goes on in their studios. Uh, I remember we used to do bad audio of the week. I loved bad audio of the week. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if people want to send us, maybe we should revive bad audio of the week. And bring I that think one that back. would be awesome. If you guys have anything you want to contribute to bad audio of the week, send it in and put bad audio, bad audio of the week or B A O T W in the subject. So we know it's for bad audio of the week. We'd love to feature it on the show. Right. And of course, good audio too. If you, if you happen to have that, but we've sure. gotten some weird, we've gotten some weird ones in the last couple of weeks and people not quite understanding, you know, what is physical and what is, what is. Yeah. Digital. Right. What is happening inside the mouth and the face and what's actually happening electronically. Sometimes right. there's confusion about that. So we might in the future feature a segment or two about that. Right. All righty. Well, that's going to wrap it nice and tightly up into a little bow or mm-hmm. into a big bow. Well, we kept it almost to an hour. <laughs> All right, better get out here. Yeah, I know. Man. They're, they're, call, they're starting to knock on the door yeah. already. <laughs> anyway, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. <laughs> and I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you next Monday night. Have a good night.